Blessing Soul Family, this is Jules, and this is the Activate Evolution live interactive show. And we have uh, an audience with us today. So if you are listening to this on a podcast and would like to join us live on our interactive show, just go to activateevolution.com. You can go either to the Facebook group or you can just go to the tab that says join the live interactive shows and I'll take you right to the link to join us. So let's just start. I feel as though, because I am just amped up today, just plugged in with the divine frequency. Let's just integrate that frequency just a little bit by starting with an attunement. So breathing in through the nose and allowing this beautiful white blue light to trace along the brain and down through the spine, out through the mouth. Mm. Focusing on your heart center as you connect to that beautiful light within you. Just noticing by just connecting to this breath that your body immediately shifts into very grounded and sacred space. Just creating a beautiful container to allow the voice of the divine frequency to flow through, delivering the message that is needed for your heart, your expansion, for you to step boldly into your next. And just taking one more deep breath, blowing it out. Oh, that felt really good. I needed that. So today I'm going to talk about why, the why behind we care what other people think. And for those of you that know me, know that I don't like to go into (laughs) why, because it creates a story. So I'm going to approach it in a little bit of a different way of actually just looking at the energetic pattern of caring what other people think, what challenges come in, and then looking at both sides of the coin of how we may respond to that caring, but then how we can actually use caring what other people think to amplify connection with not only the other person, but with the divine itself. So when you go into that energy of caring what other people think, we can literally trace it back to birth. We can, we can trace it back to the very primal program of survival. And what I mean by that, especially as we move out of infancy and we start to move into the kind of toddler age when we quote unquote can do things wrong, we are a lot of times shamed by our parents and we are told that we are wrong and it's not that we were wrong it was what we were doing was wrong but because we created a program or loop around when I do something that's not approved of that I'm no longer loved and if we are not loved as a toddler, as a child, then that primal instinct of survival kicks in because we are reliant on our caregiver to survive. So you can see where the, that place of caring what other people think can very much be based in survival. And that's where it begins. And then of course we continue from that place and move into our adulthood and that little wounded space within us. And I'm gonna say that if we are responding by being deeply wounded about what somebody else thinks about what we're doing or what we're saying, then we know that we are being triggered in a childhood wound and that we are playing out that program, that we're playing out that program. 
that's the first awareness piece right there is to be aware that I'm in my wounds. I think it's really important to know when we are behaving from our wounds, whether it's caring what somebody else thinks, being defensive, uh, showing up with manipulation, uh, what's you know really looking at how we quote unquote behave from our wounds because we're defending a program of survival. And caring what other people think is one of those really big ones. People, you know, like where in our lives do we stay small because we're afraid of humiliation. We're afraid of failing. We're afraid of somebody saying that we're wrong or bad. Caring what other people think. What if in this moment, to not care about what other people think gives you the permission to fully step in to what it is to be a vessel of the divine. What if the choice was, I either choose what this person thinks to have control over whether or not I speak, I say yes, I take action. Or do I allow the divine to fully pour into me and that that is such a stabilized energy that nothing matters? And what does it take to get to that place? Because what happens when we let the divine come in and fully fill that space of needing approval, needing validation? that the only validation that we need is between us and our divine. And the rest of it is a reflection of how strongly we can hold that. And if we start seeing life from that space, everything changes. Because then if we are triggered by somebody else's response to a behavior that we did or an idea that we had. If the reflection isn't in the space where we are being held in that divine space within us, it just doesn't matter what other people think. So the reflection is there for us to see just how strong our connection to that divine within us is. And that is the only thing it it needs to be used for, really. That's the only thing reflection needs to be used for. And what can be really beautiful is when we do have an idea or we have something that we wanna share with the world and we're sharing it from that place, most often the reflection will come back to us from that frequency. And if it doesn't, then that is a space for us to actually go in and see something that the divine is trying to show us. It has nothing to do with the other person. It has to do with you and your divine. It always does. There was something else that was coming in when I was tracing back to that place of caring about what other people think. So how we can use that to create a connection with that other person now that we have solidified how what the art of not caring what other people think is actually to live our lives and make our choices to make to every step is that from the divine within us because if we live our lives from that place and somebody else doesn't like it 
it only makes us commit to our divine even more because that is between you and your divine. It's a kind of like somebody coming in and saying, let's say the divine said that your heart is here to express the element of love. And then somebody comes and says, well, no, you don't, you don't have love in you that's only going to open your heart even more because the divine is saying, not only do you have love, but look what you can do with this love is that you can actually shower it on the people that can't see love. That's a way shower. That's a change maker. That is being a vessel of divine grace. So when those, when we get butted up against by those outside forces, it only allows us to step even stronger into that place of the divine. But by doing that, we offer connection in the divine of the opposing force because we're not in resistance to it. We're not pretending it's not there. We're not reacting from our wounds. We are only shedding the light of the divine in all situations. And can we do this perfectly? Well, it's a practice, right? And it's recognizing when am I going back into my programming and when am I fully stepping in to that space of the divine? Because when I take action from the divine frequency, all is perfect all is well. And every experience of life is in supporting that frequency to get stronger. That feels really good to me. Let me just go into it a little bit more. See if there's something more for... I keep going back to that place of the, of just the other, there's the side of coin, the side of the coin. So the experience of either being wounded by what other people think, or almost like defending that wound by getting angry or pushing the person away because they don't agree with what we agree with. Like those are the ways that I feel like caring what other people think can be played out. And, and yes, there's probably more ways, but I think that's simplifying it is that we either become defensive or we become, we act from our wounds, meaning we stay small. We don't speak up. We, um, uh, you know what I'm trying to say, you can see where you would show up. So I think we can all see in our lives, like where we've played both roles in caring what other people think. So what I want to do is I want to do, I want to do an own code. We're going to do an own code to activate that space of allowing the divine come through. But before we do that, I want to actually remove the code of that wound in the very beginning that if we quote unquote do something wrong, that we're unlovable that we're not worthy of love, that we are, that we need to defend ourselves in order to survive. You know, it, 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 and when it happens, when we are triggered in that programming, it feels like we're gonna die. And in those moments, we can ask ourselves, am I really in danger right now? Am I really going to die because this person doesn't agree with me? Am I really going to die if I don't get validated for the truth of who I am? Kathy, do you have your hand up? I can't tell. No. Okay. Um, and so I want to go into that validation piece because this is one of those subtle ones. And then we'll do the activation. This is one of those subtle ones that can come up. And I, I, and this is, I see so many change makers get in the, their way and actually interrupt an energetic pattern of the divine pouring into them. So let's say they get the hit and you get the hit and it's pouring into you and it's pouring into you and it feels sacred. It's exciting, but it's also not in form yet. It's not in a place where you tr you have proof or evidence of the truth of what this frequency is. 
And let's say it's some like radical thing that nobody's done before. And instead of trusting it and taking the action steps that are you're being guided to, you call up your mom or you call up a friend and you tell them your idea, looking for them to say, wow, that's a great idea. Or wow, that's amazing. You should definitely do that. And yes, if somebody does do that, great. But they're never gonna meet you in the frequency of where, what you're actually holding until you fully embody what it is that you're supposed to do. So even if it is an agreement to the frequency or the download that is between you and your divine, the need for validation in order to take action is basically saying, I don't trust in the divine to, to go forward until somebody else tells me it's okay. And that's an interruption of frequency. And then even take a step forward. What if they say that's a horrible idea and then you never even take the action and then guess what happens? The divine's gonna go find somebody that will. And then you just missed out on the magic. You just missed out on the magic. Okay, let's do the cup. So hands on hearts and just, mm, let's take a deep breath in. Reconnecting to that white blue light. So we're going to turn off the code that was turned on in the primal response of the need to have others be in agreement with us, to have validation. That energetic pattern of needing reflection in only a positive way, feeling wounded. And we are told that we are wrong or bad. And then we're going to bring in the beautiful divine expression, what it is to be a way shower and truly not care what other people think, not because you don't care, but because the frequency of the divine within is so strong that the caring comes from a place of sharing that divine frequency with another, creating a connection and love, no matter where the other person is. I'm gonna move right into the recorder cell and trace the double helix as we turn our attention to negative one, nine, five, eight, five, seven. We'll allow this code to move into random form as we pull it through the double helix into source frequency as it moves into particles of possibility. Being recreated from the divine and the probability of the expression of positive nine, five, four, three, six, one, eleven. 6, 11. We'll allow that code to sequence and move into the energy centers of the mind, activating electric impulses that hold this divine intelligence just feeling as the divine pours into your brain and down through the spine and then activates the hydrogen bonds of every cell of your body as it creates a system holding this intelligence, allowing you to plug in to the divine, feeling it within your heart, your mind and in your body as they connect in the one frequency. This is your power. This is your sovereignty. This is your truth. 
And from this place, you cannot fail. From this place, you are only love. You are the expression of perfection. You are the most advanced technology. Just allow yourself to surrender into this frequency as you witness the upgrade within your body. Let it feel Let it move into your strength, your wisdom. And sing silently to yourself, I am wisdom. I am power. I am the one. I am the way. And I say yes to the divine in all areas of my life. And from this yes, I am unstoppable. And just taking in a deep breath. Ooh, and as you breathe it out, we say, thank you, I love you, it is done. Okay, so we will now open it to uh, interaction. So if somebody has a, a reflection or a question or a comment, uh, I'll just let you raise your hand or you can just unmute yourself. And if not, then we'll go ahead and conclude. Give it one more second as people process. Go ahead, Gabriella. Yeah, I think it, thank you. This is just so perfect, so timely and wow. So many of us, I think, are encouraged or feel to step up, to step, you know, to show up and everything, the whole frequency that uh, you've recoded the old stoppers, um, it couldn't have been more stop on, uh, spot on <laughs> for me personally um, and uh, yeah, unbelievable. And, uh, you know, thinking back of the past of, like I said um, in the chat, you know, children exam fears and, and all that stuff that has followed right into adulthood no longer needed those frequencies and i i mean this code that has come through the freedom it gives to be who we are um uh, that the timing is just absolutely perfect thank you so much jules yeah yeah i love that free to be me mm. <laughs> Thank you, Gabriella, for that. Thank you. Go ahead, Sandy. I um, absolutely agree. The timing couldn't be more perfect. <clears throat> you know, um, what's been my experience is organic. It's that as I keep on going and embrace more and more the divine, that the awakening to the higher frequency happens without my even I mean sometimes I have to go back and say okay I'm in low frequency and you know I need to redirect where it's going out in but other times the experience of awakening is an organic thing and this little piece is so rooted in the survival and the connection to being a, a very young child on the planet is a wound that I think, I don't who, know of anybody who has a body who doesn't have this wound. <clears throat> and the other thing that occurred to me as this was, as you were speaking, Jules, was I feel that 
all my life I have been on the current of <laughs> the United States being plugged into the wall in a certain a certain a certain current and now I am pulling out the wire from that current and I'm that one European current or divine current. It's like just going someplace else, recognizing that I I I have been connected to a current that I didn't know that I was. And now I know that I was connected to a wrong current, which is the automatic programming to something completely new, which was always been there, but I didn't recognize it. And that is the current of the divine. It was, it just gave me chills. I, that was so beautifully said. And, and I love that you're using current because that is what it feels like when we're plugged into our programming. That's what runs through our body. That's what runs through our reality. That's what runs through our experience. It's what re runs when we have a reaction to something or when we start to unplug and plug into a frequency outside of our programming. And that starts with a relationship between the divine intelligence within ourselves because we start to trust in the voice or the energy of something outside of our own programming and we can tell the difference and then of course we build on that and when we start to actually attune to that intelligence and let that intelligence start to run our lives is when when we see these other frequencies come in that would normally activate a lower program or a program, we don't respond. We Well, I guess a better way is that we do respond versus react. And we start to feel the power of what it is to fully surrender in the truth of who we are and that that matters more than anything else. It's like, you can take away everything, but you cannot take away that place inside of me that is connected to my truth. Did you have a comment about that, Gabriella? You're good. Okay, <laughs> Kathy. What I'm feeling with this new um, code that we just downloaded into the DNA, I feel it's like a flow of unstoppable energy. I just feel it just, it opened up wide. I felt it. I feel, I felt the frequency just go boom into a whole new space. So uh, yeah, thank you for that code. Rocket ship. That's, I just, the, it's the rocket ship. So we just all, everyone that's listening, everybody, whenever you're listening to this, we have full permission full permission to be our truth and the more that we surrender into that truth and it's not truth from the ego but it's truth from the heart it's truth from that divine intelligence within us is when we create a momentum of fully stepping into the power that we're here to be and this year is the year to do it, you guys. It is time. It is now. It's what we came here for. And that just gave me chills. That was a confirmation. This is what we came here for. So where in your life right now are you holding back? Because you're afraid. And just sitting with that for just a moment and sitting with it until we see it fully on what it is that we're afraid of. And then once that we're, uh, we're in the awareness of where that fear is coming from, we create a choice. And in that choice, it's either, it's a divine choice, it's a divine inspiration that's ready to move forth, or it's one that needs to be nurtured a little bit longer but at least we're clear about why we're not taking action. Because when we have a hit to do something and we're in that space of fluctuation 
of do I do this? Do I not do this? It gets, it moves into the ego mind. It starts to get programmed because we're either afraid to, to take action or we're not sure what to do. And we'll, we start to fluster in it. We, we put it into the hamster wheel. And then all of a sudden it's so far from the divine frequency that we can't even remember what it was that first inspired the thought or the action to begin with. And so going back to that place, we all have one right now, you know, like whether it's small or big, just going back to it again and bringing it back into the heart and asking, is this an inspired action, a divine inspired action I should be taking now? And if that is a true yes, what is holding me back from doing it? And we can ask for strength. We can ask for stamina. Divine pour into me. Give me the courage to say yes to you because I know what it's like to say no. Okay. Well, I think that's a good, that's a good place to just end the call and just let everybody kind of sit in that and reflect on that. Thank you everyone for being a part of the live interactive show. This is um, the first Wednesday of every month. So I invite you to come to the next one. And until we meet again, I'm just sending everyone so much love and a great big hug. And it is time to step in to your highest potential.